In this video, we're going to introduce indeterminate forms, and then we'll learn how to take the limits of indeterminate forms. This might seem like it's somewhat eccentrically placed, but L'Hopital's rule is very rarely taught in Calculus 1. It's not merely our textbook that does it this way, even though Calculus 1 is where the other limit material is usually presented. My assumption is that this is because the main application of L'Hopital's rule is found in Calculus 2. In any event, suppose we are trying to take the limit of a fraction. Here C might be a finite number, it might be an infinity symbol, but at any rate, we're trying to take this limit. Very frequently, we can just take such a limit without any bother. For example, if f of x and g of x are continuous, and plugging c into g doesn't give you a division by zero error, you can just let x equal c and compute the limit that way. However, that's not always so easy. We are going to introduce two indeterminate forms. Zero divided by zero and infinity divided by infinity. If both the numerator and the denominator go to zero, the limit is indeterminate. We do not have enough information to say what the limit is. Likewise, if the numerator is going to infinity and the denominator is going to infinity, that is indeterminate. Because consider, zero divided by any non-zero number is zero. On the other hand, in a limit, any non-zero number over infinity, sorry, over zero, gives you infinity. So in this fraction, one of these zeros is trying to make the fraction small. The other is trying to make the fraction large. Who knows which will win out? Likewise, in a limit, infinity divided by anything but infinity is infinite. So this numerator is trying to make the fraction large, but anything other than infinity divided by infinity is zero. This denominator 
is trying to make the fraction small. So these are indeterminate because the numerator and denominator are in conflict. For example, consider the sine of x over x squared and the sine of x over x and ask what happens as x approaches zero. This green curve, as x approaches zero, the numerator approaches zero, the denominator approaches zero, and the fraction approaches one. This red curve, as x approaches zero, the numerator approaches zero, and the denominator approaches zero, just like what happened down here. But this fraction approaches infinity. L'Hopital's rule is a limit-finding technique that helps you deal with these indeterminate forms. Back in the Stone Age, when I learned this, it was spelled like this. It sounds like there's been kind of a movement to retaining the original pronunciation marks and spelling. Spell it how you like, I guess. But L'Hopital's rule, <laughs> sorry, is a rule for taking the limits of indeterminate forms. It says that if and only if f of x and g of x both go to infinity or f of x and g of x both go to zero. That is, if this is an indeterminate form, the limit as x approaches c of this fraction is the limit as x approaches c of the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. Be careful here. We are not taking the derivative of the quotient. That is to say, we are not using the quotient rule on this fraction. We are taking each of these derivatives separately. We will not, in this course, try to explain why L'Hopital's rule works, but we'll end this video with an example. Let's compute this limit. 
Now to use L'Hopital's rule. We need to be in one of these two forms. And it's easy for a student to get out of the habit of checking whether we are in one of these two forms, because of course we are. It's the L'Hopital's rule section. But you really need to verify that L'Hopital's rule applies before you use it. As x goes to zero, this is continuous and this is continuous. So the numerator is going to one minus the cosine of zero. The denominator is going to zero plus zero squared. This is an indeterminate form, indeterminate. Sorry, I got into the habit of saying indeterminate long ago, and it stuck with me. This is an indeterminate form. So we can try L'Hopital's rule. And I use the word try advisedly because there's no particular reason you should be able to take this limit. So there's no guarantee that L'Hopital's rule will be helpful. But frequently it is. And L'Hopital's rule says, since we have an indeterminate form, we can take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of the cosine is the negative sign. We've got the negative sign already, so those cancel. Of course, the derivative of one is zero. Then the derivative of x plus x squared is one plus two x. And let's check to see whether we can take this limit. Remember, the sign is continuous, the denominator is continuous, division is continuous. If we can plug zero into this and we don't get a division by zero error, that's taking the limit. And if we do plug, zero into this. We get the sine of zero over one. The sine of zero is zero. This is not an indeterminate form. Zero divided by one is just zero. And we have successfully taken our limit. And before we end the video, let's go ahead and verify graphically this is the graph of one minus cosine x over x plus x squared. And you see as x approaches zero, y also approaches zero from both directions. So the limit really is 
zero.